So we're transitioning from lesson two where we're talking about the pH level and we're going to our guiding question. And our guiding question is, how might an oil spill affect an ecosystem and what are some materials, tools, and methods we can use to help clean it? So that's the question that we're going to think about. We've been given a task. There's been an accidental oil spill in the river. You're going to work to design a way to clean this oil spill so it has the least impact on our ecosystem. That's our goal. So what do you think it might be important for you as environmental engineers to know about the ecosystem where the oil spill takes place? We need to know how, how the ecosystem works, but, but like the herbivores and the carnivores. So we need to know how it works. What else do we need to know? How the ecosystem is being infected. So what, what are the changes, right? How they're being affected. Which step of the engineering design process are we working on? I think we're doing the ask part because we are asking questions of what we need to know before we start cleaning up the oil spill. We have to ask a lot of questions before we can do anything. So we are at the ask stage. Now, before we can find out how the oil spill might affect this ecosystem, environmental engineers need to know how the ecosystem works naturally before it's been polluted. We are going to create an ecosystem web. Each of you are going to have a role. One of you is going to be the sun, the algae, the gulls, the bacteria, the insects, the adult salmon, the river, small fish, green plants, and bear and deer. You're going to get together with your organism and you're going to discuss what your organism needs to survive, its basic needs, and you're going to complete the statements on the back of your ecosystem card. I get water from, from energy from, I get food energy from, 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 from deer. We're going to be creating a model showing how different parts of the ecosystems are connected. So we're going to get into a large circle. We're going to go around the circle. And each group of students playing the same ecosystem role will share where they get their food and energy from. I'm a green plant and I get my food and energy from the sun. So this is going to make a connection to the sun. Sun, step forward please. And you're going to hold on to that. Let's have bears. So what do you eat? We eat fish. So let's go to fish. Gulls. We eat fish. So you eat fish. Bacteria. Um, Where do you get your energy from? You get your energy from the river. Where else? The sun. Okay, salmon. Where do you get your energy from? I get my energy from small fish and insects. Okay. So why do you think this is called a food web? It's basically a web where um, we all have connections about we eat um, or we get we eat or we get energy from different things. It gives us information on all the connections. Imagine that oil is spilled into the river. Anything that lives in the river needs to sit down now. The fish live in the river, so they would probably be affected first. Will everything be affected at the same time? No. no. All of you who are sitting down. As I call you, you're going to give a gentle tug. Small fry. Tug. So given what we have just learned in our activity with the food web, why do you think it's important to clean up oil spills? Alexis. I think it's important to clean up oil spills because it, it harms our entire ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Very nice job, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow we're going to experiment with tools, with materials and methods to clean up an oil spill. What materials, methods, and tools do you think we can use to clean up an oil spill? Talk to your neighbor. I wonder if, if we can like put the oil spill oil spill in the um, in the car, like in the in the little um, gas tank if we can put it in there. Yeah, yeah I, um where are we gonna put it? Because my sister says I can't pour it down the drain because it'll affect our environment and now I know why. So she makes me put in this um a pickle jar. So let's make some connections. And actually think um, we accidentally spilled some water on this table. What did this table use to clean up the water? Paper, paper towel. We used a paper towel. And what did the paper towel do? Did it spread it around or what word? It absorbed 
so a paper towel absorbed it. So thinking about cleaning up a spill or a mess at home, do you think what you use at home could work here? Malaysia. Um, we use a mop. Use a mop to pick things up. One. I use a sponge. A sponge to pick things up. We're going to talk about two specific ways to clean up an oil spill. And these are ways that are actually used out in the real world. One is using what's called a boom. Let's say that word, boom. Now, they use a boom to contain the oil so it doesn't spread. If you take a look at this red thing, can everyone see that? This is the oil right here, and they kind of circle it around to try and contain it. Then, the second thing is they remove the oil from the surface of the water. So they do multiple steps. You're going to go into your bucket. You have permission to open up this bag. Just explore them, feel them, touch them, look at them. And I want you to make some predictions. The water and oil don't mix. Um, you can, you can um, put it up there, like put a coffee filter under the oil. I think this is containing because it can surround it. What do you guys think of the spoon? I think you could just remove it. Well, sometimes when you like try to put a spoon in something, sometimes it can spread it around. Yeah. What's something that's going to contain the oil? Selena? The rubber band. The rubber band. What's going to remove the oil? How? Um, I think the pipette. The pipette? Well, we're going to test these materials. I noticed that like the inside, uh, that little space right there is getting bigger. That like bubble spot is getting bigger. It looks like a donut. Look at there's a bubble in there. Look at it. So you need to make sure you're, you're drawing what you see and then answer these questions. What happened after you tested the material? How spread out is the oil now? Is it a thick layer or a thin layer? For me, mine's thin and it's spread out more. Go ahead and take notes. Draw your boom and then draw the oil. Pence, finish up what you wrote. Now we're going to test a way to remove the oil. So we're going to start off with cotton ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it like contained, it like soaked it up though. I'll just lay it like. Yeah, hold it on a little bit. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. It absorbed it a lot. Okay, write down what you got. Nope. Oh, you stick. Uh huh. I agree. I think I'll have to like sit. What the? Okay, now take it out. Oh, that didn't. Yeah, that didn't even work. So the coffee filter didn't serve anything, right? Yeah. It's like trying your filter, but it's yeah, out. the coffee filter didn't serve it. It didn't serve it. It's um, like, it's trying to serve it, but it can spread out. Yeah, I mean, it's all oil. Yeah, and then squeeze right here. So look, look at look at all that water. It has oil on it. Even that spoon gets a lot of water. See? No, because I went down. And does it have Go on this doesn't it have even uh, this top. doesn't have a lot. Use the top. Because it doesn't have oil, it just has a little Yeah bit. it does. Look at that's and then the oil. pipette soaks up all that little particles of oil. So it's still no good if it if the water still has a little bit of oil. Maybe both would work but this one's like the best thing. So what we now need to do is we need to gather our class data. Environmental engineers, once they do tests, they get together and they say, huh, let's share our information so we can make a good decision. The check plus means, oh my gosh, it was wonderful. It either contained or removed the oil, superb. The check, well, we yeah, kind of did it okay. It removed some of the oil. And the check minus, yeah, no, didn't work at all. So team one. For yarn? Um, check plus. What about rubber band? Um, check. Check? Yeah. What about cotton ball? Check plus. And sponge? Check plus. And paper filter? Check. And last team, cotton ball? Check plus. And spoon? Check plus. Environmental engineers, 
test out different materials. And then they have to think, huh, which would be the best material to use for our oil cleaning process? For example, what's good about the cotton ball? It absorbs. It absorbs. Who can give me a con about? Con is a disadvantage. It's a shante. When you put it out of the water, all the oil drips out. So when you take it out of the water, the oil drips out. Based on what you've learned today, what are your top three choices for mar materials or for tools? We choose the boom, pipette, and the spoon. You choose boom, pipette, and spoon. Okay. How? We choose um, the... Um, the boom would be the yarn, and we, uh, and the other one is sponge and spoon. Very nice job, ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow, we are going to move on to the imagine stage. I think that EIE requires the kids to think. It requires them to make connections, to think on a higher level, and it encourages them to go back and look at their data. Because if you look at lesson three, we have all this data where they're testing their materials, and then lesson four, let's choose our materials. Well, go back and look to see what, you, what your results or what your observations are, and then choose based on that. So I think EIE does that quite well, to go back and look at the information, use your data to make informed decisions.